again, everybody, along with Joe Simpson, Skip Carey, welcoming you to another night of Atlanta Braves baseball. Braves home from a 3-3 road trip and take on the Arizona Diamondbacks in the first game of a three-game series tonight. Let me get this straight, Joe. Ben Sheets struck out 18 on Sunday against Atlanta. And now the Braves get to go against the league strikeout leader, Randy Johnson. The old proverbial out of the frying pan into the fire type thing for the Braves tonight, Skip. And it wasn't a good day at the office on Sunday against Ben Sheets. He really had a good breaking ball working. The Braves left-handers especially were having a very hard time laying off his curveball in the dirt. There were some nine block third strikes swung at by the Atlanta Braves on Sunday out of those 18 strikeouts. Now then, Randy Johnson's on the mound, and while he has a losing record over his last six starts, he has an ERA of 1.98. You might say he's gotten his mojo back after suffering some knee problems last year in which he had a losing record. But not all is lost. There are some guys in the lineup including Chipper Jones, who have had good numbers against Randy Johnson. And look at Chipper, six home runs. That's more than any other pitcher that he's hit home runs off of. So maybe tonight is a good night for Atlanta in that Randy Johnson is out there because they have played pretty well against him in the past. Meanwhile, they've got a pitcher on the mound. The Braves do is really do. Mike Hampton is 0-4, an earned run average over 7. About time for him to get things straightened out as well. We'll be back to bring you the game, but right now let's send it to Mark Fine in our studios. 73 degrees here at game time at Turner Field. We've had rain all over the metro area, but right now it is dry at Turner Field, and we'll try to get this one started without any raindrops tonight. And here's a look at the starting lineup for Bob Brindley and the Diamondbacks tonight. Chad Tracy has a lot of family here to watch him play. He's from Charlotte, North Carolina. Matt Cato will bat second, then Louis Gonzalez. Shea Hillenbrand playing first base for the injured Richie Sexton. Steve Finley's a hot hitter in center field. Danny Bautista in the top ten in hitting as well. Alex Cintron, Robbie Hammock, and Randy Johnson round out the order. For the Braves defensively, Chipper Jones is back in the lineup out in left field. Andrew Jones in center, J.D. Drew in right. DeRosa and Garcia. Jesse back from his bereavement leave. Jesse is at shortstop. And Nick Green gets his start at first start at Turner Field at second base tonight. Julio Franco at first. Johnny Estrada will do the catching. And on the mound, Mike Hampton, who, as Skip said, in dire need of a win. He's 0-4 in his first seven starts of the year with a 7.41 ERA and a very high batting average against him. Six and six lifetime against the Diamondbacks. And last year pitched one of his better games against Arizona. He was he worked eight innings, gave up four hits and only one run and struck out four in his only appearance against the Diamondbacks last year. Umpires for tonight's game behind the plate will be Greg Gibson. At first base is Bruce Dreckman. Jerry Davis in his 21st year as the crew chief. He'll work at second base tonight. And Larry Poncino works at third. The Diamondbacks embarking on a long road trip. 13 games, 13 days, four cities. And they are going to play 20 straight days without a day off. So they're in a real rough stretch of their schedule. They've lost five in a row. So that's not any way to get a long road trip started. They're in last place out west, eight and a half games back. And Chad Tracy leads things off. He's out of Charlotte, North Carolina, and we're underway, and the first pitch is a strike. Greg Gibson out of the University of Kentucky, by the way, the home plate umpire. 0-1 oh, the count. Tracy doing all right. Boy, hit that ball hard. Hampton got a piece of it. Throws to first. I don't know if it got the glove or the leg. Jim Lovell is on his way to the mound. So is Bobby Cox. That ball was hit hard. We'll look at it again here, see what happened. Got his right knee, maybe part of his pitching hand, but definitely got the right knee before he could get the glove down. And his leg kind of collapsed there as he was trying to get turned to make the throw to first. Just above the kneecap. I'm glad it was above the knee. It's mostly a little meat up there, but he's going to throw a few here to see if he's going to be able to continue. And this is the kind of thing he may be okay now, but 20 minutes from now it may swell up. We don't know. It's his landing foot, and as long as it can take the pressure of the weight of his body going forward, he should be all right. Looks like he is. That was a bolt. 
Jeff just, Porter and Jim Lovell are two great guys and good friends, but I'm tired of seeing them. Yeah, they're <laughs> getting them way, in the dugout. Way too much air time. Yeah. First pitch outside to Matt Cata, I think. He's hitting 264, a homer 12 RBIs. Right in there, it's one and one. Mike Hampton's had some first inning problems in his earlier starts, and tonight it's not the runs he's worried about, but the line drive he just took off his knee. The 1-1 one, one. hit hard, passed and under the glove of DeRosa into left field. He's around first. He's going to drop anchor there. I don't know if Mark didn't see that ball or what, but he didn't react to it real quickly. It was hit very hard. Runner at first, one out. No, he just didn't get the glove down, Skip. He was playing in close, and the ball was hit sharply, but he should have had the glove down to begin with and didn't. So Keita is at first with one out and Luis Gonzalez the batter. That's outside one ball no strikes Gonzalez has done very well against Hampton in his career. 12 out of 33 with five home runs. Keita edges away. And has to dive back. Diamondbacks are not a whole lot unlike Atlanta in that they are battling injuries to key players. Robbie Alomar out with a broken bone in his hand. Richie Sexton out with a bad shoulder, although they hope to get him back within the week. And they've got several pitchers on the DL2, including Matt Manti, the closer. Double play ball, maybe. Low throw out there. Out there. They still get the double play. And a terrific play by Jesse Garcia. In the middle of that, that could have been a disaster, but it's averted, and the inning is over. Bottom of the first, no score. We go to the bottom half of the first inning. No score thanks to a nifty double play turn by the leadoff man, Jesse Garcia. He'll be followed by Julio Franco and then Chipper Jones. Andrew Jones in the cleanup spot tonight with a lefty on the mound. Johnny Estrada bats fifth. Then J.D. Drew in the sixth spot. DeRosa, Green, and Hampton rounded out. We'll give you the, deep, the Diamondbacks defense shortly as Randy Johnson is ready to tow the rubber. Jesse Garcia leads it off against him. Jesse hitting 295, a homer, eight RBIs. Right. And a strike is right in there. It's 0 and 1. Randy Johnson, 54 innings, 16 walks, 68 strikeouts. League hitting 178 against him, and he's got a losing record. He's on his own. They got him. One out. Randy was a spectator on that play. The ball got by him. He didn't figure he could do anything except louse it up. So he watched Hillenbrand make the play. You can see his follow through takes him to the third base side. Very difficult for him to get back. So a smart idea by Garcia, but Hillenbrand cut him off at the pass. Play by the first baseman. Julio Franco, the batter. He's 7 out of 28 in his career against the big Arizona left hander. Right. Strike right in there. We understand that Chad Tracy has family from Charlotte and Marietta. Section 202 tonight. Right below us. We hope they enjoy the game. 0 right. oh 2. If there's been any sign of Randy Johnson letting up, it is not because of age. I mean, even though he's 40 years old and was 6 and 8 last year, he battled some tendonitis in his knee that put him on the disabled list a couple of times. But this guy's won five Cy Young Awards, four with Arizona. There's his 69th strikeout of the year, his first of the night, two down. And here's the defense behind Johnson tonight. 
in the outfield left to right Gonzalez Finley and Batista. There is Chad Tracy at third base. Alex Cintron at short Matt Keita at second Shea Hillenbrand at first Robbie Hammocks also from the Atlanta area from South Cobb High School out in Marietta and Randy Johnson on the mound 40 years old 6 10 230 out of Walnut Creek California makes his home now in the Phoenix area in his 16th year Chipper Jones has had very good luck against him but not that time 0 and 1 has six home runs in his career against one of the best pitchers of this era. One, two. one of the things that's different about Randy Johnson this year he used to be mostly a fastball slider pitcher. That's about all he needed. But he's added a split finger pitch and he might throw as many as 20 tonight. That looked like one there as if he needed anything else. Started to go held up in time. He throws you a couple of those and that makes that good fastball look even better. Chipper started to swing but that ball was by him. Mm -hmm. It acts like a change up for him, that splitter. Down and in it's two and two. Big Braves fan Ruth Daniel looking in in Atlanta tonight never misses a Braves broadcast. Good to have her with us. The 2 2 pitch. And the inning is over. 1 2 3, nothing doing. At the end of an inning, no score. Braves en Espanol, which means Braves in Spanish, is brought to you by Office Depot. Pete Manzano, Fernando Palacios have the play by play story in Espanol. 0 and 1 the count to Shea Hillenbrand. As the second inning gets underway Sammy Sosa has been placed on the disabled list by the Cubs. We understand grounder to short Garcia with a quick release one out. Helen Brand is out of there Steve Finley the banner. Everybody thought it was funny when he didn't play because he got hurt sneezing but it's not so funny to the Cubs now he's out two weeks. Now they're missing Mark Pryor and Sammy Sosa and Kerry Wood is expected to miss a start with some problems in his arm and they're tied for the lead in the central division. This could be worse low and away one ball no strikes. Here's a guy that has bounced back from a slow start. He typically is a slow starter but my goodness 12 home runs already leading the major leagues and he's done most of that work in the last couple of weeks. And sp speaking of the Cubs a lot of those home runs have been against the Chicago team. He's always had surprising power to me he's slightly built but he's a very strong guy. Very good low ball hitter. He's had sort of a strange career as a power hitter. He never hit more than eight until 1994 in either the majors or the minors. Fly ball, well hit right field. Drew on the track puts it away. That ball was hit a long way. That's out of a lot of ballparks. Two down. And Danny Bautista, the former Brave, hitting 343 is the batter. Bautista ninth in the league in hitting and the catcher setting up right behind him there Estrada 10th in the league in hitting. Right. Oh and one the count. Two out nobody aboard. It's even now a ball and a strike. Diamondbacks placed another one of their players on the disabled list yesterday. Greg Colburn who's also a former Brave. He's had some wrist problems. They called up Scott Hairston from Tucson. I tap. Foul ball. 
Johnny Estrada had no idea where that thing was. It was sailing over his shoulder. One and two, the count. It looked like when it came down and hit the dirt the second time, it actually was still in fair territory, but it had so much spin on it, it cued back into foul territory. Straight above Johnny, and he can't find it. Oh, yeah, it was a fair ball, and then missed him as it was coming back. Odd-looking play. One and two, the count. We are scoreless in the second. Joe Simpson, Skip Carey with you. Gary Lehman, our director tonight, and making his weekly appearance on Braves TV, our producer, Glenn Diamond. Little looper into right field. Drew comes on, cannot get there. He made a nice play on the short hop, but a two-out hit for Bautista to keep the inning going. And Alex Sintron, the shortstop, will be the batter. He's seven of his last 36. The last two guys in their order have really been struggling as you get another look at Bautista fighting off that curveball. Drew coming up with it on that short hop, but... Not only Sintron, but Hammock also. Hammock is 5 for 36. So the bottom third of their order scuffling. Fans right above us here are blowing bubbles. Which come drifting into the booth every so often. As pictured there. Into left center. That's going to plug the alley. Bautista runs very well. They're going to wave him. Here's the relay. And the throw to the plate is offline. He's safe. Throw gets away. Runner to third. It'll be an error on the shortstop, I think, on the throw. It's 1-0. Diamondbacks. To double R RBI, third on the throw. No, third on, on an air, I should say. I thought that ball was catchable on the throw. Not that the run wouldn't have scored anyway. It would have. Centron went down and got a low fastball, it looked like. He had 13 homers for the Diamondbacks last year. But here's Bautista motoring around. You see the throw come in. That was definitely a catchable ball, but I maybe he got screened. Estrada got screened by the runner. E2. And it is an error on the catcher. You're right, Bill. And I think he did get screened. 0 and 1 the count. With Randy Johnson pitching, you don't want to give up too many. Robbie Hemma hitting 239 on the year. Just missed inside. It's 1 and 1. Hammock out of Macon, GA, lives now in Marietta. University of Georgia product. And he's in the hole one and two. Got one more angle on that throw coming in from Jesse Garcia on the relay. You're in line there and you can see that right at the last second, Bautista crossed in front of Estrada and blocked him. That's one of those where maybe a team error, if they had such a thing, would apply. Just missed inside. It's two and two. The Diamondbacks came into this game last in the league in walks allowed, last in the league in errors committed. That's a real bad combination, as we've been talking about all year long for Atlanta. Well, the Braves already with two errors tonight, just one shy of the Diamondbacks' 31 errors. Got it. Hammock caught looking. The inning is over, but not before. Arizona takes the lead. A run on two hits. An air and a runner left. Bottom of the second. one nothing. Arizona. We go to the bottom half of the second inning. Andrew Jones leads it off against Randy Johnson, who has a one nothing lead. And one breaking ball in the dirt. San Diego at Pittsburgh rained out. They'll play two tomorrow. 
Randy Johnson lost his last start one to nothing to Tom Glavin. He went seven innings, gave up only three hits, and tonight he has a one he has one run anyway to work with and has the lead. Just missed outside, a ball and a strike to count. Cardinals an early lead over the Mets, 3-1. Tom Glavin pitching that game. And having a rough time of it early. High drive, center field. Finley is back there, though. He hit it a little bit off the end of the bat. One out. Time for a reminder about our telecast, our Holiday Inn Express in the booth question. Beg your pardon. If you have a question, send us an email. And if chosen, we'll answer it later in the game. You can send your email to tbsmailbag at atlantabraves.com. And please tell us your name and where you are from, if you don't mind. Johnny Estrada, the batter. One ball, no strikes. Colorado Cincinnati 3 3 in the fourth. Florida is losing tonight. That's out of play, and the count evens a ball and a strike. You know, that second argument Johnny Estrada had with umpire Doug Eddings Sunday, in which Johnny eventually was the 18th strikeout of the day, that was started by home plate umpire Doug Eddings. Remember, I said if Johnny had started this, he'd probably be thrown out of the game. Eddings actually had the gall to say, you know, geez, Johnny, you go five for five last night, and now you're going to give me grief? I thought that was a brutal thing for an umpire to say. And oh, Johnny, I said, if I were you, I'd have filed a complaint against the guy. That stage of a game trying to start something. Very unprofessional, Doug Eddings. Two balls, two strikes. The count stays the same. Braves have three guys in the lineup tonight that have never faced Randy Johnson before. Jesse Garcia, Johnny Estrada, and Nick Green. But if you're any player who has watched Randy Johnson when you were a kid, you know you want to get a chance to see what you can do, how you match up with him. Two and two, the count. Unless you're John Crook, then you don't want to be involved yeah. at all, do you? No, not too many left-handers do. But I like what Nick Green said about tonight's challenge. He said, I want to see what I've got. Full count, three balls, two strikes. Houston, three nothing over Florida, bottom of the third down in Miami. They're just underway in Chicago where the Giants are playing. Giants a big disappointment in the early part of the year. Still three and two. There's one out, nobody aboard. Arizona has a one nothing lead. Same two teams tomorrow. John Thompson against Webb. Still three and two. Brandon Webb's a pretty good pitcher. Johnny Estrada, a pretty good hitter when he's got two strikes on him. Even when he works the count back to a full count, he's still up on the bat a little bit, trying to guard the plate. And he does it right there. Still three and two. And that might have been a little bit off the plate, but he wasn't going to take a chance and let it go by. 96 on that fastball from Johnson. What a great average with two strikes on him. Tomorrow night, our old friend Walter Victor gets honored here at the ballpark. So if you're coming to the game, it's a 7.05 start. Get here a little early. Strikeout number three, second out of the inning. Well, 
Well, he tried just about everything and then went with the backdoor slider, and that was a beauty. Right to the outside corner, and Estrada couldn't reach that one. J.D. Drew is just one for five in his career against Randy Johnson. He doesn't hit against him very often. Up and in, 0 and 1. The last 10 and two thirds innings, 21 Braves have struck out. 0 and 2. Left handers hitting just 140 against him for the year. Right handers a whole lot better, 189. Yeah. Well, they're wearing him out. Mm -hmm. He's pretty good. Up and in, got him, strikeout number four at the end of two, one nothing, Diamondback. Randy Johnson leads things off in the third inning for the Diamondbacks. And looks at one low, one ball, no strikes. That's right in there, and it's one and one. Pretty good signing by the Diamondbacks, don't you think? He's gone 90 and 39 with Arizona. Four Cy Young Awards. Pitched him to a world championship along with Kurt Schilling. They were the dominant duo for that club. One and two, the count. Bob Brindley's been taking some heat in the papers in Phoenix, but like we said, he's had a lot of injured players and some guys who aren't playing up to par, so can't hang a whole lot of this on him. And apparently the front office in Phoenix is not. That's good. Chad Tracy is the batter. He lined one back off Hampton's leg and was thrown out his first time. One ball, no strength. This guy's hit at every level that he's played in their organization and started the year this year in AAA. Bob Brindley said it was the toughest cut he had to make coming out of spring training. But after the injury to Sexton, they moved Hill Hillenbrand over to first, and Tracy got called up. He's out of East Carolina University, and he, he can hit. Speaking of Richie Sexton, he took BP tonight, reported no pain, so things are... Moving right along for him. He should be back soon. Two and one the count. The good news for him is that it's his left shoulder. It's yeah. not his throwing shoulder. They probably would have already done surgery. He's still among the league leaders with nine home runs and he's missed three weeks. <laughs> three and one the count. Matt Cata is next. It has been a struggle for them since Sexton went on the disabled list. So Tracy is aboard. That's the first walk of the night for Mike Hampton. Runner at first, one out. Kata, the batter, he reached on an air his first time. Wonder if he's a friend of. Remember the Green Hornet, Joe? Are you too young for that? No, Joe? I do. Wasn't his companion Kata? That was Kato. That oh, was Kato. Uh -huh. Throw to first, runner back. Lamont Cranston, that was a green horner. I think the Red Bumblebee, though, had a sidekick named Kata. I'm not sure. The Red Bumblebee? Mm -hmm. It's been a show only heard in Oklahoma. Oh, and one the count. He was a rival of the Green Hornets. Oh, and one the count. No, don't go there, Skip. Just let it lie, buddy.
we talk about the wasps, but they're all running for president. So. <laughs> The 0-2 pitch. Fly ball, left center field. Chipper gets over there. Two out. And Luis Gonzalez, the batter, he wrapped into a double play his first time. So though he trails, Hampton is pitching all right. A much better start than usual for him. Talked about his troubles in the first inning, and that is amplified by that 9.58 ERA in his first three innings. Middle inning seemed to be his best. And to be quite frank about it, he hasn't pitched too much in the seventh, eighth, or ninth inning so far this year. One ball, no strikes. One or no, the count. Two and oh, the count to Gonzalez. Twelve out of thirty four now against Hampton in his career, five home runs included. He's been battling some injury problems too, been playing less than a hundred percent. It's nine for his last thirty four, but of those nine hits, four homers. Three and oh, be careful here. They might just turn him loose. Gonzalez with 10 homers, 23 RBIs. Shea Hillenbrand on deck. They walked him on four straight. So two walks in the inning, but two are out. And now he has to get Hillenbrand, who grounded to short his first time. Both the walks to left handed hitters. Randy Johnson looks on, hopeful of getting some insurance here. He leads 1 0. Ground ball foul past third, nothing in one. Good athlete came to the Diamondbacks from Boston for Bin Hyun Kim. Good hook. 0 and 2 the count. So Hillenbrand Brand quickly in the hole. He's now playing Richie Sexton's position and has his spot in the batting order too. Hit and clean up. Strike three called. Fastball at the knees. Inning over. Good job by Hampton to get out of a mess. He records his third strikeout. Bottom of the third. One nothing Arizona. Mark DeRosa leads off the bottom of the third. Check swing strike. 0 and 1. I guess it was the strike. Maybe not. No, it's a ball. Mark is struggling. That's putting it kindly, and he's the first one to tell you so. Fly ball, well hit right field, but not well enough. Bautista near the wall. One out. Seven in a row, knocked over by Randy Johnson. Anytime he pitches, you think about the possibility of a no hitter. Mm -hmm. And that's been the case with him since he signed with Montreal back in 1985. Everybody was just kind of sitting and waiting for that to happen. And it did. Here's Nick Green. Right. 0 and 1 the count. Hold 
That was inside. A ball and a strike to count. Threw a no hitter back in 1990 while with Seattle. The Phillies have moved to within a run of the Dodgers at 6 5 in the fourth. Philadelphia is still batting. batting. One and two, the count. The Giants failed to score in the first at Wrigley Field. Green stays alive. It's an end of Alexis level. Green was the only member of the Braves lineup on Sunday that did not strike out. He went one for three against Ben Sheets. Actually one for two with a walk. A ball and two strikes the count. Still one and two. Used to now five nothing over the Marlins down in Florida. Rounded foul the other way. Still one and two. Boy, Nick was quick on that. It appeared to be a slider down and in on his shoe tops. He really turned on it. Nick was quick. That's very good. Yes. A ball and two strikes. Green spoils another one. He's having a good at bat. One and two still the count. And I'm sure that he's got a lot of family and friends here watching his debut in Atlanta. He's from Duluth High School. Two balls, two strikes. If you can get into the Arizona bullpen, you got a chance. It has been sort of a disaster zone this year. Too short. Simtron unloads. Close. Just did get him. Two down. Let's go to Mark Fine in our studios. Mark. Okay, Mike, thanks very much. Mike Hampton, the batter here. Hitting 231. Yet to drive in a run. On the outside corner. It's 1 0, Arizona. One and two. If Joe's mom is looking in tonight, thanks for the, the dessert. The diabetic nightmare, but it was really good. <laughs> Thank you. Hello, Dolly's were a hit. One and two, the count. But low, two and two, the count. Four Braves have struck out to this point against Randy Johnson. He shakes off a sign. Now he's ready. You can make that five, and the inning is over, and he's set down nine in a row. And after three, one nothing, Arizona. Steve Finley, Danny Bautista, and Alex Cintron do up. 1 0 to Finley, who flied out deep to right his first time up. Hampton has struck out three and walked two. One and one the count. Finley had a good home stand despite bad results for the team. They were just two and eight in their ten games at home. But he did hit four homers, and out of his last 18 games, he's hit 11 home runs. After only 
one homer in his first 19. And he leads the majors with 12. That fooled on that one, and Julio Franco will take it to the bag himself. One out. Here's your Aflac trivia question. Cue the duck, fellas. Aflac. Thank you. Since 1960, who are the only left-handed pitchers in the National League to win the pitching triple crown? But I know one of them. Aflac. That would be wins, ERA, and strikeouts. Bautista single with two out in the second, scored on a double by Cintron. Hopper to DeRosa, he pats the glove, throws him out, two down. And here is Centron, who had the RBI double in the second inning, his 11th RBI of the year. Very pleasant night at the ballpark. Had Thunderstorms pop up all over town for the last few days, but so far so good here tonight. One and oh, for the native of Puerto Rico. Two and oh. John Thompson against Brandon Webb tomorrow. Thursday, Horacio Ramirez against Casey Fossum. Line drive right at short. Garcia's got it. And the easiest inning so far for Mike Hampton. One, two, three, go the Diamondbacks. We go to the bottom of the fourth. Still one to nothing, Arizona. Braves have gone nine up and nine down. That means Jesse Garcia gets to lead off again, this time in the fourth, and he takes a strike. That to me has been the key so far for Johnson. He's getting ahead in the count. It's getting much like Ben Sheets did on Sunday. It's one thing to try to strike everybody out when you're behind 2 and 0 or 3 and 1, but he's getting ahead and he's ahead of Garcia 0 and 2. Nice ratio to strikes the ball so far. Got him to chase a high one. Strikeout number six. Get ahead 0 and 2. Throw a few pitches near the strike zone, but make the hitter get themselves out. Julio Franco fanned his first time. Johnson's career record 233. Versus 118 losses. It's fourth on the all time strikeout list behind Nolan Ryan, Roger Clemens, and Steve Carlton. His sixth tonight so far give him 3,945 strikeouts. Zero oh and two. Everything's 95, 96 miles an hour. Well hit to center. Finley going back and just shy of the track. He's got it two down. And as Chipper Jones advances to the plate, it's time for our John Deere leaderboard. As you see, Chipper has had great success against him, and Andrew Jones has three homers against him as well. Chris Hoyles. It's not a name you'd really just no. fire up there on the all-time home run list against him. Just to play with Baltimore. Chipper struck out his first time up. He struck out pinch hitting against Ben Sheets on Sunday. And struck out his last two times up 
in Milwaukee on Saturday before coming out of the ball game. So that's four straight strikeouts. Chipper, he's got work. Right. One and two. And every strikeout in this game has been swinging, so there are no alibis. Just a great pitcher. Mm -hmm. There's the first call third. Chipper didn't like it. And that'll end the inning. Strikeout number seven for Randy Johnson. And we go to the fifth. One to nothing Arizona as we go to the fifth. Robbie Hammock struck out his first time up. Takes ball one. Just five for his last 37. Hits that pretty well to left field, but right at Chipper Jones. One out. And Randy Johnson will be the batter. He struck out his first time up. Randy's three for 17 on the year with a double and three RBIs. Out of play. Hampton has set down five in a row. And if his knee is bothering him after taking a line shot off his right knee from the first batter of the ball game, he's not showing any signs of it. Well, hit to right field, but right at J.D. Drew. Johnson hit that one on the nose. Let's send it to Mark Fine for an update. All off Wilson Alvarez too. He's been pitching so well for the Dodgers. Braves will probably see Alvarez on Sunday here. Chad Tracy has hit that line shot back at the pitcher. He was thrown out after Hampton recovered the baseball. He's also walked. Four for his last seven, including a homer. 0 oh and 2. Good turnout at the Chop House tonight on a very pleasant evening. To the left side, nice diving stop by DeRosa, and his throw pulls Franco off the bag, but the runner can advance, backed up there by Green. It'll be a base hit. He made an outstanding play on this ball. Rushed it maybe a little more than he had to. And Julio might have caught the ball anyway. But it scored a hit. And that'll bring up Matt Cata. Reached on an error in the first inning and flied to left in the third. Cata's just six for his last 48. Well, they've got some guys that are struggling. That two and eight homestand would indicate their five game losing streak would reflect. During that two and eight homestand, their starting pitchers went one and seven with a 591 ERA. That includes Johnson's one to nothing loss. To Tom Glavin and the Mets. Down the line, foul. Rafael for call, by the way, had another MRI on his hand yesterday. They did detect, it did detect a bad bone bruise on his right hand. And he was taking some ground balls today, but I think the earliest you might see for call play the infield would be the weekend. 
He's talking about maybe playing second base for a while till it comes back 100%, but we'll see. Two out, a runner at first. Still 0 and 2 to Cato. Braves are 8 and 7 at home. The Diamondbacks on the road 6 and 9. Atlanta just wrapped up a stretch where 20 of 27 games were on the road. One and two the count. Kata checks his third base coach, Al Pedrique, for the signs. Glenn Sherlock coaching at first. Runner goes. Swing and a foul ball into the glove of Estrada, who hangs on to it for the strikeout. Randy Johnson has retired the Braves in order 12 up and 12 down, and he has struck out seven of them. As we go to the fifth, Andrew Jones, who's hit in four straight, leads off the inning. And ropes one to left field, but Gonzalez right there to make the catch. Andrew right on that one. And Johnny Estrada, the batter, he struck out his first time up. Randy Johnson leads the National League in strikeouts. He's got 75 now. Ben Sheets with those 18 on Sunday moved into second place ahead of Roger Clemens. He's got 66. Clemens with 62. This is Randy's ninth start. He does have a complete game already this year, so. May not be any help in that area. 0 and 1 to Estrada. Him to chase a bad ball. That's unusual for Estrada. 0 and 2. Roger Clemens has the lowest batting average against him of any pitcher in the National League at 170. Johnson came in at 178 in the second. And another batter falls to 0 and 2. The big unit wants another baseball. He was a second round pick in 1985 by Montreal out of Southern California. University of Southern California. One and two the count. J.D. Drew will follow. One out, nobody on. 13 in a row set down. That might be a base hit, but it's foul. Estrada hit the ball hard. Johnny Nine for his last 22. Came in 10th in the league and hitting at 342, just a point behind Bautista. Johnson tried to put a little extra on that one, threw it 97 miles an hour, but it was fouled off.
A little looper toward right field. Bautista has it. Two down. Johnson's split finger pitch skip is not like Kurt Schilling's, which is thrown hard and it just the bottom falls out of it. But it's one that does have enough change of speed on it that, as you pointed out earlier, when he's throwing 96 or 97, it's just like a change up. And even if he misses with it, it just mm -hmm. enhances his fastball, which is good enough without enhancement. Well, this is enough of this. Somebody's got to get a hit, don't they? Breakout time. J.D. Drew struck out his last time up. One and one. Only one thing to do in a spot like this, Joe. Rally headphone. There we go. We're you've, okay you've now. You've had enough. I think you're ready. I think it might have worked, too. Bautista on the run. No, he's got it. Nice running basket catch, I guess, by Bautista. And that's 15 in a row set down by Randy Johnson. And we go to the sixth. Still one to nothing, Arizona. Randy Johnson perfect through five innings with seven strikeouts. First inning, the fifth that he failed to strike out a batter. Alex Gonzalez leads off for the Diamondbacks here in the sixth. He's hit into a double play and walked. Or excuse me, Luis Gonzalez, the batter. Foul to first to Luis, one and one. Luis just nine for his last 34. Cut at that one though, one and two. Luis with another good year last year for Arizona. He had 304, 26 homers, drove in 104 runs. He's driven in at least 100 runs each of the last five years, including 2001, where he hit 57 homers and drove in 142. Two and two, the count. Good home run numbers all the way across there. But boy, he really jumped up in 2000, 2001. Here he hit 325. Little chopper off the plate. Hampton has to hurry, but got him. One out. That's one bit of good news tonight. Mike Hampton has really pitched well. He's still got a chance to win this game, of course, but even if he fails, he's pitched by far his best outing of the year, in he's my thrown, opinion. Thrown more strikes, too. He's yes. been around the plate. He's had a good sinker, as that last pitch would indicate. 69 pitches, 45 strikes. Dylan Brand is grounded out and struck out. to third DeRosa gets a big hop throws high but Julio hangs on to the bag two down the two errors committed by the Braves tonight the eighth time this year they've had a game in which they've made more than one error Steve Finley has flied to right grounded out 0 for 2 He's hitting Mike at a 292 clip coming in. Right handers 357. And that's well hit to deep right center and Drew on the run. Flags it down right in front of the Henry Aaron sign to end the inning. Good running catch by Drew. Prevented Finley from getting extra bases. We go to the bottom of the sixth. Still one to nothing. 
Arizona. It's a perfect game so far for Randy Johnson through five innings. He faces Mark DeRosa to start the sixth. Want to know the count. One and one. Fifteen up, fifteen down, seven strikeouts for Johnson. Little tapper toward short, cut off by Tracy, and he makes the play. Sixteen in a row. Number Let's take a look at the. Wagner's supercar. Nick Green grounded out his first time up. Two for seven since he got called up from Richmond, where he was leading the International League and hitting at 377. in the dugout. Be on the shelf for six to eight weeks with that broken collarbone. And the way Marcus likes to talk, that won't go fast enough for some of those guys in the dugout. He'd be a viable candidate for a Friday night appearance on the uh -huh. baseball extra. Yes, he would. Like you and I could stay home. <laughs> Just turn him loose. Two and one to Green. Slider biting down and in. Two and two. Johnson has not been to a three ball count on a hitter yet. Still two and two. Green fouled off some pitches his first time up before grounding out. Mike Hampton waits on deck. One out in the sixth. Struck him out. Green out of there. That's eight strikeouts for Johnson. A lot of us were just happy that Marcus Johnson was speaking after this collision in Milwaukee. If you didn't see it. It's the worst I've ever seen between an outfielder and an infielder. Watch the whiplash effect here. That's what had us so scared was a possible neck injury. And he did have a slight concussion to go with the broken collarbone and bruised hand. Mike Hampton fanned his first time, as you see on his Wagner supercar. One and one. You know, when Randy slips or the ball comes out of his hand funny or mound doesn't feel right, he drops all the way down to about 95. Yeah. He is tough. Seven on that one. So one pretty, pretty spry on that I one. I think he did. He had a little <clears throat> working. Well, this is no different than the scouting report we had on the guy about how strong he has been, especially his last six starts. That's going to be a tough play for Cintron on the run. Throws and got him. And Hampton retired, and that makes it 18 in a row. And Randy Johnson slaps gloves with Alex Cintron. For preserving what is right now a perfect game game for Johnson through six innings. We go to the seventh. Still one to nothing. One run, three hits, no errors for the Diamondbacks. No runs, no hits, two errors for the Braves. Randy Johnson working on a perfect game through six innings, pitching against Atlanta tonight. We go to the seventh. Danny Bautista leads off for Arizona. And back once again, here's Skip. 
Okay, Joe, thank you. Bautista singled and scored the only run of the game with two out in the second inning. He singled and Sintron doubled him home, and that's been it. The Phillies have claimed a 7 6 lead over the Dodgers in the sixth. Strike called outside corner to Danny Bautista. One out of two puts him at 346 on the year. Right back past the mound. Nick Green has it. One away. Bautista broke his bat and grounded out. Sintron, the batter. One for two. He's hit the ball hard both times. Randy Johnson, by the way, if you're wondering, knows exactly what's going on here. He's no idiot. That's a fair ball. DeRosa couldn't make the play. He's going for second, and he'll make it. It'll be a double. So Sintron has been the one guy who's been tough for Hampton to figure out tonight. That one looked like it bounced right over the bag. It was a fair ball. And DeRosa did a good job just to get leather on it, but he still couldn't corral it. Right over the bag and on the line. Good call down there by Larry Poncino. So an insurance run in scoring position. Robbie Hammock, the batter, is 0 for 2. Takes high. In case you're wondering, Randy Johnson will hit for himself next. I had a feeling. Rats. Two and zero. The count. Hammock four for his last twenty-eight. So he's been struggling. Braves play him straight away, and he takes outside, and it's three and zero. He's the guy they liked enough that they traded away Chad Moeller. He's done a good job for them, although he's struggling at the plate with the bat in his hand, not struggling behind the plate. That's the third walk for Hampton. Two on, one out, Randy Johnson. You would figure would be bunting with Chad Tracy on deck, the leadoff man, but we will see. Al Padrique runs through the signs at third. Glenn Sherlock coaches over at first for Bob Brenly's team. Houston hammering the Marlins now. It's 9-1 in the sixth. He's swinging and he hits it foul. Took a shot at right field. 0-1 the count. Well, everybody's okay. I think they are. He had a shot to right field his last time up, but I have a feeling he missed a sign. Oh, and one the count. Two on, one out. We're in the seventh inning already. It's one nothing Arizona. Randy Johnson has a perfect game working. This time he's going to bunt and bunts foul. Oh, and two. I'm not sure that his heart was all the way into that bunt. He looked, he looked like he was bunting for a hit. Didn't yeah, he, he kind of had the bat down at his knees and didn't get it out in front of him. Why don't you just drop the head of the bat there? Since they've still got him bunting. He probably wants to swing away. Two on, one out, and an 0-2 pitch forthcoming to Randy Johnson. Julio Franco can almost shake hands with him. Strike three called at the knees. He's out of there. Two down. Let's go to Mark Fine back in our studio.
Okay, Mark, thanks a lot. Chad Tracy, the batter. Matt Holliday continues to swing the bat well for Colorado. One ball, no strikes. Cintron runs at second, Hammock at first, there are two out. Up the middle and through, runner around third. Andrews got a shot. Now he throws to third, they got the runner hung up. But a run is in and he is tagged out and the inning is over. But Chase Tracy drives in his 15th run of the year. We go to the bottom of the seventh, it's 2-0 Arizona. Randy Johnson, a perfect game through six innings. That means the leadoff man, Jesse Garcia, leads off the seventh. He came as close to a hit as anybody back in the first when he pushed a bunt down the first baseline, was tagged out by Shea Hillenbrand on a close play. A couple of balls have been hit hard, but right at the outfielders. A little outside, one ball, no strikes. Randy Johnson has one no-hitter. That was against Detroit back in June of 1990 when he pitched for Seattle. Hit hard, but foul. He has four one-hitters, four two-hitters, 13 three-hitters in his career. One of those one-hitters came with two out in the ninth inning, too, against Oakland. One of those three-hitters was in a playoff game against Atlanta. Back in 2001. One and two, the count. 80 pitches for Randy Johnson were in the seventh inning. Only 19 balls, 61 strikes. This is very reminiscent of Ben Sheets in terms of the strikes to ball ratio because Sheets didn't get into the 20s and balls thrown until like the eighth or ninth inning. That is nine strikeouts. Julio Franco, the batter. He has struck out and flied to center. He's seven out of 30 in his career against Randy Johnson. One ball, no strikes. Last 46 outs for Atlanta dating back to Sunday. 27 strikeouts. They've run into two buzz saws. Through the fastball right by him at 97. It's one and one. Not getting tired, is he? Not yet. I thought maybe he was a little bit in the fifth inning. Line drive out by Andrew Jones. Line drive out by J.D. Drew. Upstairs, 98 miles an hour with that one. Two balls, one strike. If you're from the old school and think it's wrong for the announcers to let you know what's going on here. He had a good cut, fouled it back. There's a great big electronic scoreboard out in center field that's got the runs and hits, and it says zero for each. So why shouldn't you know? Everybody in this ballpark, about 30,000 people does. There it is. El Perfecto to this point. That's Spanish lingo for a perfect game. Yeah, the people in SAP didn't even need SAP on that well, one. We try to help whenever mm -hmm. we can. Ground ball to second. No hit there. Two out. That's 20 in a row. And here's Chipper Jones, who has struck out swinging, struck out called. But as we've told you on each trip, has normally done well against Randy Johnson. The way he flipped the bat in the air after striking out to end the fourth inning. Sure that home plate umpire Greg Gibson remembered that Whirly Bird look. 
I'll be honest with you, when he flipped the bat, I was halfway expecting him to get ejected. Yeah. But I don't know if he was angry with the umpire or angry with himself for taking the pitch. It's the only called the strike out of the night for Randy Johnson. He had a good cut, but he fouls it back. It's one and one. Here's the call third strike. Take a look at the target. See how Hammock wanted the pitch up high, wanted him to waste the pitch, but instead it's right there. The Crossfire fastball and goes the bat. You could see Gibson saw it, but chose to ignore it. Good for him. 97 on that one. It's one and two. Skip, there have been some pitches tonight that the Braves, you know, have had a chance to hit that they foul tip, like the pitch just before the tip or foul back. But Johnson's too good tonight. Upstairs, two balls, two strikes. That's where Hammock wanted the pitch that was mm -hmm. called strike three last time. Up. Two nothing is our score. Bobby Cox can only agonize. That's 10 of them. Chipper's got the hat trick. 21 in a row. He's still got a perfect game. We go to the eighth. And we go to the eighth, and Matt Kata leads it off. Short to bunt, took low. One ball, no strikes. Kata has reached on an air, fly to left, and gone down on strikes. Mike Hampton. Lost in the dominance by Randy Johnson has been a really outstanding effort by Mike. A little low, two and zero oh, the count. Two nothing Arizona is our score. A perfect game for Randy Johnson through seven innings. Three and zero oh. Sunday. Jarrett Wright pitched well after a rough yeah. first inning where he was. Wild. He settled down and limited the Brewers to three hits over the next five innings and no runs. That's right there, three and one. Well, when you're struggling, that's what happens. When you pitch well, you don't hit. When you score five or six runs, your pitching gives up seven or eight. Three and two. Braves are playing a ball club that's really been struggling. They lost eight out of ten at home, mm -hmm. and they start a 13-game road trip tonight. They've lost five in a row, but I don't care who he's pitching for. Randy Johnson makes it tough on anybody. No that should be easy, and it is one down. The way things are going tonight, he could be pitching for the making Little League, and he'd still have. Pretty good stuff working and probably wow. a perfect game. I would say, yeah, that if he was pitching in the making Little League, he'd probably have a perfect game for this point in time. If not, we're really in trouble. Yes. Luis Gonzalez, the batter, is 0 for 2 with a walk. Good curveball, 0 and 1. Texas has Kansas City shut out again. Five nothing in the fourth. Oh, Kansas City struggling. That'll be easy. A broken bat. Two out. Shea Hillenbrand, the batter. Right field base hit a two out single for Hillenbrand gives Steve Finley a chance Finley is 0 for 3 but he's hit two very deep fly balls in this game. And I'll tell you what I don't know this but if I were Randy Johnson I just soon Hillenbrand had made it out so I could get back out there and it's do my a, thing. Yeah he's been in a nice groove struck out two more in the seventh. Although I think seven innings is enough in this age of specialization. Would, yeah, I'd try to save him for his next start. Yeah, Bob Brindley. Here you would. Low and away, one ball, no strikes.
23,281 or something like that, the attendance. Lined into right field, on comes Drew, cannot get it, it drops for a hit. Two on, two out, Finley had another good swing. And now Danny Bautista is the batter, it's 23,381. Two out and a runner at first, the outfield playing a little deeper than normal, and that's why that ball was able to drop in, but still hard hit by Finley. And if you're asking why the outfield was deeper, well, with a runner at first and two out, you're trying to cut off the extra base hit to keep a run from scoring from first on a ball hit in the alley. Bautista tonight has singled and bounced out twice. He has scored one of the two Arizona runs. We are in the eighth. It's 2 nothing Diamondbacks. Randy Johnson has been perfect through seven. Hasn't been lucky. No. Any more so than Ben Sheets was on Sunday. Right. Both of the RBI hits for the Diamondbacks tonight have come with two outs. And just like the second inning, when the rally started after two were out, nobody on, that's the same situation here. A ball and a strike. Down the right field line, Drew on the run, good catch. And good outfield positioning again, saves Atlanta. Two hits, no runs, no airs, two more runners left. Bottom of the eighth, can he keep it going? It's two nothing, Arizona. Andrew Jones leads off the eighth. Randy Johnson has a perfect game, Andrew has Fly to center and line to left and hit one foul over by third. 0 and 1. He's had good swings yes. against him tonight, but nothing to show for it. In two at bats, I think he's had the best swings. Last perfect games thrown in both leagues. Been a while in the National League. 0 and 2. Yes, he knows exactly what's going on. Everybody in both dugouts knows what's going on. Oh, and two, the count. No sign of any let up. Had an excellent fastball tonight. Good command of it. He's been ahead in the count all night long. An excellent slider down and into the right-handed hitters and an occasional splitter. High fly ball, center field. That'll be easy. He's five outs away from perfection. One out. Johnny Estrada has struck out and flied to right. This stage of the game, too, where your defense behind you begins to get a little jittery. Yeah, they want to make plays for Randy Johnson, but they also want to make sure they're not the one that boots one or messes up a play that would cause the perfect game to go away. Everybody's praying for good hops and high pop-ups. There's an oddity about Randy Johnson's career. 0-1. He, he's looked at life from both sides now. He's pitched a no hitter, and he's had one pitched against him by the Cardinals' Jose Jimenez back in '99. 0 oh and 1, the count. Twenty-two in a row have gone down. A perfect game to this point. 0 oh and 2. And again, these are good pitches to hit. Estrada was upset with himself that he didn't jump on that one, wasn't able to put it in play. But his fastball's got enough life on it tonight and a lot of late movement that the guys can't zero in on it. They can't put the sweet spot on the baseball. Let me ask you this. I don't know that either bullpen has stirred tonight. When's the last time we saw that on the bottom half of the eighth inning? 
Oh, that didn't miss by much. One and two. Yeah, that pitch seemed to cross Hammock up a little bit. But you're right. A long time. Johnson, when he got beat one to nothing by Tom Glavin in his last start, went seven innings. Right at three to one. Strikes to balls tonight. Wow. He's four away. That's 11 strikeouts. Estrada has been out on strikes twice. Sidearm, flat delivery with that slider. And it's biting down and in. And it's got enough of the plate that as a right handed hitter, you think you could go out and get it. But it's also thrown hard enough to get in on you before you can react. J.D. Drew the batter 0 and 1. Looked like a slider. He has struck out and fly to right. Hit the ball rather hard on that occasion. Seldom has played. Has only seven at bats in his career against Randy Johnson. One and one. 101 pitches now for the Arizona left-hander. He's four outs away. I pop down the third baseline into foul territory. Nobody can get there. It's in the seats. One and two, the count. Was it a perfect game that Kurt Schilling had working for the Diamondbacks in San Diego not so long ago and Ben Davis dropped that butt down on him in the ninth inning? I don't know. I remember you and I argued about that yeah. for about three months. I know it was a no-hitter, but I don't know if it was a perfect game or not. The one two pitch will not be made. He steps off. Ground ball to second. And that should do it in the eighth, and it does. And the fans are getting with it now. Some of them are rooting for Randy Johnson, and it's understandable. He's got a perfect game through eight innings. Stay with us. Needless to say, the man of the hour is Randy Johnson. He has struck out 11. He's retired 24 in a row. He's working on a perfect game as we go to the ninth inning here in Atlanta. Danny Bautista leads it off and singles to left on the first pitch. Looking ahead to the bottom of the ninth, it's the lower end of the order. DeRosa, Green, and Hampton are due for Atlanta. Robbie Hammock is the batter, 0 for 2 with a walk. By the way, Kurt Schilling was working on a perfect game until Ben Davis beat out that bunt. It was a 1-0 or 2-0 game. Back to the mound, should be a double play, not now. Runners are going to be at first and third. Hampton had a double play, but threw it away. That'll be the third Atlanta error of the night. I don't know who was actually covering second base there. If we could look at that again, Glenn, when you have time. Right now, Randy Johnson bats with runners at first and third. Nobody out in the infield in. He shows bunt, bunts foul. Trying to figure out what happened to Mike here. He makes a good play. Looked like Green was going behind the bag, and Hampton didn't realize that. That's what happened. He thought Green was covering, and it was the shortstop, Jesse Garcia, which makes it at least understandable, though unpleasant. 0 and 1, the count. Joe is on his way downstairs to try to visit with Randy Johnson if he gets the perfect game or a no hitter here tonight. Right now he's three outs away from both. Way outside a ball on the strike. 
Armando Almanza gets up and begins to throw in the bullpen here in the ninth inning. Well, I lied. <laughs> Joe is not on his way to the field quite yet. The 1-1. One, one. Bunted foul. It's 1-2. and two. Let's see what they do here. They may just, with the infield in, they may just have him hack away. Runner goes from first. Little tapper. Runner stays at third. One out. So runners at second and third. One out. And Chad Tracy is the batter. He's two out of three. Has hit the ball hard every time up there. He has also walked. Ground ball to first. Look the runner back. Two out. And I'll tell you what, we're all thinking about a perfect game and a no hitter, and rightfully so, but it's only a 2 0 ball game. If Hampton gets out of this, a ninth inning rally is not out of the question. They had runners at first and third with nobody out. Now they're at second and third with two out. And Matt Cata is the batter. He is 0 for 4. He has reached on an error. High lazy fly and Hampton did a great job of damage control. He got out of a major mess. One hit, no runs. One air, two left. Let's see what happens. Will he get the perfect game? We'll be back. Randy Johnson has a perfect game through eight innings. If you don't believe me, there's the box score. He has faced 24 men. He's gotten all of them out. He's struck out 11 of them. Mark DeRosa has fly to right and bounced to third. It's a two-run game. A little low. One ball, no strikes. 84 miles an hour on the breaking ball. Johnson has thrown 104 pitches. One and one, another curve. No action in the bullpen for Arizona. This is his game, and it sure has been to this point. Out of play, one and two. 95 miles an hour with that fastball. But as Joe pointed out so aptly earlier in the game, when you throw that breaking ball in the splitter, it makes his good fastball look even better when he runs it up there. The one two. No hit there. 25 in a row. And the crowd is into this thing now, rooting for Randy Johnson, and I can understand that. Even Braves fans have to be dazzled with the way he's pitched. Eddie Perez moves on deck to pinch hit next as Nick Green stands in. Strike. You might be saying, Eddie Perez, why Eddie Perez? Well, because he's hit the daylights out of the ball against Randy Johnson in his career. 0 oh 2. Eddie's six out of 13, a home run included. The 0-2 to Nick Green. Low and inside, a ball and two strikes. One out of the ninth. Randy holds a little team meeting with himself.
And his 1-2 to the youngster. Here it is. Hit fouled on the right side. Still 1-2. and two. They don't have one yet, but they're close. Two outs away. The one two got him over the inside corner. That's 12 strikeouts. I'll tell you who's done a terrific job tonight is the home plate umpire Greg Gibson. Here's Eddie Perez. Mike Hampton pitched great. But Randy Johnson has been perfect. You don't do better than perfect. Two out, nobody on. He's not out of the woods yet. Oh, and one, a breaking ball. He's two strikes away from a perfect game. The fans are on their feet here. Many of them now rooting for Randy Johnson, rooting to see his streak. One and one. Two out, nobody on. Jesse Garcia would be next. Grounded foul, it's one and two. his brow. He's thrown 115 pitches, 86 of them strikes. Two and two, 97 miles an hour. He overthrew it a little bit. Who can blame him? A perfect game with one out to go. Look at his teammates. Look at Randy Johnson. A perfect game. 13 strikeouts. He faced 27 men. He got them all out. And he gets mobbed by his teammates out by the mound. This looks like the celebration a few years ago when they eliminated the Braves in the playoffs. A perfect game for Randy Johnson. Now if he can survive the pummeling from his teammates, he'll be okay. 117 pitches, only 30 of them missed the strike zone. And Randy waves to the crowd that has been so supportive of him. Two nothing the final score. The Diamondbacks got eight hits. The Braves got none. And Randy Johnson, who is going to the Hall of Fame anyway, gets there for yet another reason. Here's the way it ended just a moment ago. A high fastball got Eddie Perez. And look at Robbie Hammock. It's almost as big a thrill for the catcher as it is for the pitcher and what a punctuation mark to put on a great career for Randy Johnson. Here's that mob scene again. Look at the reaction when he got it. What's the old cliche about baseball? You got to be a man to play this game, but you got to have a little boy, a lot of little boy in you too. There's the enthusiasm of youth right there as they mob Randy Johnson. Two nothing Arizona the final. We'll be back right after this. Well, we're here at Turner Field in the middle of May and some history made tonight at Turner Field as Randy Johnson fires the first perfect game in National League in the National League 
in some 13 years, first since Dennis Martinez did it for the Expos against the Dodgers. Bob Brindley's been kind enough, the manager of the Diamondbacks, to stick around and talk to us about this. You're an old catcher. I mean, this is pretty exciting stuff. It's real exciting stuff, obviously, for Randy, for the entire ball club, but uh, I really have strong feelings for Robbie Hammock, our young catcher back there that was hanging the signs and making the plays behind the plate tonight. I told him after the ball game, that's something that... Uh, very few guys ever, ever get a chance to do. I don't even think he realizes how lucky he is right now. And we were talking, too, about how antsy the defense gets later in the ball game. Everybody's aware of what's going on. Everybody's praying for good hops and high pop-ups. There, there's no such thing as a routine play after about the sixth inning of a ball game like that. I, I assure you that everybody that had a ball hit to them, uh, their hearts were pounding, but fortunately they made all the plays. This is not a whole lot unlike what... Randy Johnson's been doing recently, though, is it? Oh, he's been pitching fantastic ball all season for us. Uh, fortunately, we were able to get him a couple runs tonight, and he made him stand up. But uh, obviously, that's as good as he's uh, he's been since I've been here. All of his pitches were working. His command was tremendous. Was in a great rhythm out there on the mound. And uh, except for a couple of at-bats, uh, he, he didn't have to run up the pitch count too much. Estrada had a real good at-bat. Green had a good at-bat where he fouled off some pitches. But other than that, uh, Randy was uh, obviously completely dominating. Yeah, and he seemed to have a, a good command, especially of his slider. The right-handed batters were chasing that ball down in on their shoot tops all night. Well, when he's got that good arm angle on the slider, uh, it's tough to pick up the rotation. Uh, and and you know, he's throwing at 87 to 90 miles an hour, so you have to respect that velocity. And when that ball drops off the table down by your back foot, uh, there's not much you can do about it. All right, Bob. Well, we thank you very much for sticking around. Go enjoy the party, and please give Randy our best. I'll do that, Joe. Thank All right, Bob. Thank, thank you very much. I did talk to uh, Randy Johnson as he was coming off the field, Skip, and he said uh, he wouldn't talk to us right now. He was very tired, but uh, I'm sure that he'll get some ice and be talking to the press as soon as uh, he gets his ice done and his normal routine done after this uh, unbelievable night here in Atlanta. Back up to you. Okay, Joe, thanks very much, and a great job as always. 2 nothing the final. 2-8-0 for Atlanta with obviously nobody left since it's a perfect game. Or 2-8-0 for Arizona, I should say. 0-0-0 for Atlanta. Three men left for Arizona. None, of course, for the Braves. Randy Johnson, the winner, is 4-4. Four and four. Mike Hampton, it's going to get lost in the shuffle, but he really pitched a terrific ball game. If he pitches the way he pitched tonight the rest of the year, the Braves are going to be in great shape. He's the loser. He's 0-5. Time of the game, 2 hours, 14 minutes. 23,381 paid to see it. Randy Johnson, the fourth player in Major League history to throw no hitters in both leagues. Nolan Ryan, Cy Young, Hideo Nomo, the others. And in case you weren't with us all night long, we got the whole shoot match for you whenever they're ready in the truck. Jesse Garcia came as close as anybody to getting a hit all night long to start the game but Shea Hillenbrand made the play there's the first strikeout it was Julio Franco Chipper Jones out on strikes as well second inning Andrew a routine fly ball to center which Steve Finley catches that's a perfect game Johnny Estrada out on strikes so is J.D. Drew in the third inning Mark DeRosa fly to right hit the ball pretty well Chase Bautista to the warning track. Nick Green grounded out. Cintron made a nice play and a close play at that at first base. And Mike Hampton was out on strikes. Moving to the fourth. Boy, the game's really moving, isn't it? Jesse Garcia out on strikes. Julio Franco popped to center. Hit the ball rather well, but shy of the warning track. And Chipper Jones caught looking a high fastball. We go to the fifth inning now, and Andrew Jones hit the ball hard. Line to left, Gonzalez almost in his tracks. Johnny Estrada hit one into deep right center that Danny Bautista hauled in. And J.D. Drew did the same. Bautista to the fringe of the track to make that one. In the sixth inning, DeRosa grounded to third. Tracy threw him up. Nick Green was out on strikes. Mike Hampton hit a chopper. This, too, a close play. Simtron handled that one nicely. That was about as close to a hit as the Braves got. In the seventh, a strikeout for Garcia. A ground out. Franco hit it to Keita at second base. Chipper chased the ball down and in. In the eighth, Andrew flied to center. An easy play for Finley. 
Estrada out on strikes. And J.D. Drew bounces to second. That brings us to the ninth inning where Mark DeRosa started the inning by grounding to second. Nick Green caught looking, a fastball froze him, and he blew Eddie Perez away, and there is your perfect game. That's the story of the game. The Braves lose it 2 nothing, and Arizona off to a terrific start on it. Doesn't get much better than this as they start their long 13-game road trip. Braves and Diamondbacks play again tomorrow. That'll be on Fox Sports South, and Joe and I will have it on the Braves radio network. Then on Thursday at 7.30 Eastern on TBS, Braves and Diamondbacks meet in the final game of this series. After the break, Mark Fine will be in the studio to update you on other games around the major leagues. For Joe Simpson and our entire crew, Skip Carey from Atlanta, where Randy Johnson pitched a perfect game today. So long, everybody.